We're going to do a quick tour of the Nye Ranch Farm here in Fort Bragg, California on the Mendocino Coast. Please no dogs allowed on this tour. This is our uh, propagation tunnel. It's a little cleared out right now as we're getting close to wrapping up our season. We seed everything into paper pots as well as uh, 72 cell trays. But uh, yeah, not much in there right now. It's a little empty. This is our first caterpillar tunnel we put up this season. We are growing uh, a lot of cherry tomatoes in there. There's three different varieties. We have indigo cherry drops, sun gold, and sweet million. They're on grafted rootstock, which has just been phenomenal for us. We're also growing the lunchbox peppers and we're just starting to harvest those. They've been really tasty. All right, we have sugar snap peas. We grow these year round in this climate. Typically only gets about 65 degrees in the summer, so they do really well here. We have uh, paper pot beets. Uh, we do uh, some red boro beets as well as the badger flame beets from row seven. Right here is our strawberries. These are on permanent, everything we grow is on permanent raised beds, but we build up the strawberry beds as high as possible because we harvest these from May through October. So we try and get them up as tall as we can because it's a lot of work harvesting them three times a week. We grow Albion variety, very sweet, very jammy. Uh, some uh, head lettuce we're growing here, as well as some Salanova mixes. These are some paper pot turnips, some carrots that we're just kind of finishing up harvesting. Purple daikon. Here's some uh, sugar snap peas that are just getting ready to harvest as well as some scallions that we have interplanted in there in a paper pot system. We got some dino kale that's just about done, rainbow chard, beets. These are one of our favorites, the purple napa cabbage. They're just starting to head up. And then the beautiful dahlias that my wife grows. In a typical season, we would have a lot more flowers, but because we just had a baby this year, we kind of scaled back our cut flower production and just growing a little bit to, to keep us happy and keep our customers happy. Got some broccoli and cauliflower, some sunflowers, some blown out sunflowers just to for aesthetics. We have a gorgeous tunnel full of heirloom tomatoes. These are our first year doing them on grafted rootstock. One of my favorite things to do is just wander the farm and just eat everything. <laughs> so you gotta quality control your whole farm every day. Make sure it's tasting delicious. And this tunnel is uh, more of the same. A little bit more of the grafted heirlooms. Because of our windy environment, we don't have much spots on the farm to kind of hang out and relax from the wind. So we created a little oasis over here by our beehives. It's the most sheltered spot on the whole farm, surprisingly. So we'll just come here, lay down a blanket, pull out a watermelon and put the baby down and have a couple beers. But uh, it's a good spot. The bees really like it there too. This is our first tunnel we ever built. It's a little bit janky at this point, but it's still standing. 
And it just has uh, some flowering basil and some tomatoes basket weaved in there. PVC, still standing five years later. Not too bad. We call the original field that we started at, that's the sunrise field because the sun rises in the, right over there to it. We, after that, we developed the, uh, this field right here, which we call Middle Earth. It's in between our two main fields. As you can see, we're farming in a very kind of sandy soil. Uh, we've improved it a lot over the years, but it still has lots of work. We're, we're up to about 8% organic matter, but still can do better. So we're really, it's been a, it's been a good process uh, get, getting it up to, to, to bear some really nice crops. We got some more sugar snap peas, carrots under the rime. These are a uh, purple daikon. Gorgeous. Bunch of lettuce mix for all our wholesale accounts. This is the barn we live in. It was built in the 1890s. Uh, it's a little rickety, a little bit cold, but it's got a beautiful view. So feeling pretty lucky to live in it. That right there is the Pacific Ocean. We are, 12, the barn is 1,200 feet from the ocean. So we get quite windy in the spring with 80, 100 mile an hour gusts in the winter is uh gets even more extreme we get beautiful 25 foot swells out here this is our little fire pit hangout spot for when uh, it's it's nice and calm some more sugar snap peas broccoli cauliflower we have some uh, summer cover crops going some peas these are some uh, fava beans and scallions and more fava beans some cauliflower. We had some water issues this year, so some of them are looking a little scrappy, but uh, most of them we're pretty happy with. Some beets and more brassicas. This is a, a little, an herbal pollinator hedgerow we put in. It's all various culinary herbs. It's flowering right now, and during the day, it's just full of pollinators, the native bees and the bumbles and the honeybees have just been loving it. We have some celery over here that's just coming up. Some more lettuce mix and summer squash over there. Got some yarrow. Uh, here we have some fennel and celery that we've been harvesting out of. Some more beets, cauliflower, broccoli, sugar snap peas. And this is a whole fall crop of more brassicas, broccoli, purple cabbage, green cabbage, purple cauliflower, white cauliflower, arugula, radishes. That's a majority of what we're growing this year. We've kind of scaled back a little bit because we had a newborn baby and we just kind of wanted to simplify our lives. It's still quite diverse, but we always like to keep ourselves busy as much as possible. Come on up, we'll I'll show you inside our barn, which is our pack station and, and wash house. This is our BCS, it's the 853. We use the power harrow for most of our um, cultivation. We haven't used a tiller on our farm in over th three years now. Uh, we use, uh, use that to incorporate compost and amendments into our soil. We utilize our flail mower quite a bunch to uh, just mow down crops right into the field so we don't have to carry them to the compost. And that's been, saved us a lot of time and it kind of mulched everything in place. Here's uh, all our garlic that we've been carrying and selling sporadically at market and through our CSA and wholesale. We grew about 10,000 heads this year uh, and it turned out to be a pretty good crop. This is our wash and pack area inside the barn. Um, we have a couple of greens dryers as well as a bubble washer 
to process all our greens, our lettuce mix, which is our primary wholesale crop besides heirloom tomatoes. This right here is our germination chamber, which has really helped us out get our seeds going in the spring when it's cool. We got our, some of our tools, our wheel hoe from Valley Oak, our tilter, which we also use for to prep beds, Yang cedar, paper pot transplanter. This is our CoolBot walk-in cooler where we store all our crops. Just got some veggies in there right now. Our backpack sprayer for applying our foliar sprays. One of our favorite tools is the Quick Cut Greens Harvester. A couple broad forks, bed preparation weight rakes, various hoes, shovels. The tool that built the Nye Ranch right here, the shovel, that's how we built all our raised beds. Some of our various harvest baskets and buckets. This is our uh, outdoor wash station. I like to wash as many roots as I can outside. Keeps the mess out of the barn and also just taking the beauty of the outside world instead of being inside of a barn as much as possible. It's just a simple little table and a concrete slab that drains. That's about it. Thanks for coming along on our little farm and uh, we hope you enjoyed it.